looking at number one and referring to our trusty rules for factoring. Number one on the list is GCF. Do we have a GCF? No GCF other than one. Proceed down the list. Number two, do you have two terms? In this case, yes. The question you ask if you have two terms is, do you have a difference of squares? Here we have a difference and each of these is a perfect square. So yes, we have a difference of squares. If you have a difference of squares, you can factor this without really writing anything except the answer. So give yourself two sets of parentheses. Just think of the square root of a squared is a. So you put an a here and an a here. And then think of the square root of 49 is 7. So you put 7 here and here. I believe you see if you multiplied a times a, you would certainly get a squared. If you multiplied 7 times 7, you'd certainly get 49. And for the correct factored form, you simply make one of these a plus and one a minus. It's a good idea to check this just so you can see why you end up with only two terms. So to check your answer, we'll just multiply this out. a times a, a times negative 7, 7 times a, positive 7 times negative 7. You can combine your two middle terms. In fact, they cancel out. So you're left with a squared minus 49. So this checks. Looking at four, number one on the list, GCF, none other than one. Number two on the list is, do you have two terms? Yes. Do you have a difference of perfect squares? Yes. So you can factor this without really writing anything except the answer. The square root of 36x squared, 6x. The square root of 25, simply 5. And you have 1 plus, 1 minus. Looking at number two, there's no GCF other than one. Do we have two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of perfect squares? Yes. So we can factor without having to write anything except the answer. The square root of x squared. The square root of y squared. and you put one plus, one minus. Looking at number three, no GCF other than one. Do we have two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of perfect squares? Yes. So we can factor this by simply writing the factored form the square root of 16u squared is 4u, so you put that here and here. The square root of 81v squared is 9v, so you put that here and here. And then you simply put 1 plus 
1 minus. Here's the factored form of our original polynomial. We could call this a binomial. And again, you should check this to see, yep, this works. Looking at number 5, do we have a GCF? None other than 1. Noting the number of terms, we have two terms. So we ask, is this a difference of perfect squares? The 81 might be easy to recognize. Yes, that's a perfect square. It turns out if you have an even numbered power, it's a perfect square as well. So with x to the fourth, I'll show you. But first, I'll write two sets of parentheses. The square root of x to the fourth is going to be x squared. So we put x squared here and here. And if you think about it, if you were to multiply x squared times x squared, the bases are the same, you would add the exponents, and this would take you back to x to the fourth. The square root of 81 is 9, so you put 9 here and here. And then to have the correct factored form, you make 1 a positive and 1 a negative. From this point, you need to continue with your list. In this case, you have two terms, but this is not a difference of perfect squares. This is a sum. There's no way to factor a sum of squares. But over here, we have two terms, and it's a difference of perfect squares. So you actually have to keep going with this set of parentheses. So we'll give ourselves two more sets of parentheses. The square root of x squared is x, so we put x here and here. The square root of 9 is 3, so we put a 3 here and here. And then to have the correct factored form, you make 1 a positive, 1 a negative, and we'll need to bring this down. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. I could also refer to this as a binomial. So again, you can factor a difference of squares, but you cannot factor a sum of squares. If you think you can factor this, you should give it a try, and I believe you'll convince yourself it can't be done. Number six is basically the same situation, so you should pause the video and try this one on your own. I'll work out number six shortly. Looking at number 6, there's no GCF other than 1. Noting the number of terms, we have 2. So we ask, is this a difference of perfect squares? Yes. So we give ourselves two sets of parentheses. The square root of a to the fourth is a squared. So we put a squared here and here. The square root of 16 is 4. So you put a 4 here and here. To have the correct factored form, you make 1 positive, 1 negative. And then continuing down the list, you have two terms. Is this a difference of squares? No, it's a sum of squares. Over here, do you have a difference of squares? Yes. So with this set of parentheses, we can continue. We give ourselves two more sets of parentheses. The square root of a squared is a, so you put an a here and here. The square root of 4 is 2, so you put a 2 here and here. And to have the correct factored form, you make 1 positive, 1 negative. And you have to remember to bring down this set of parentheses. So here's the factored form of our original polynomial. If you would like practice with this set of videos, that is, the difference of squares, 
as well as factor by grouping the introduction if you're at my website. I have a worksheet along with a detailed answer key.